Hey, this is Joel Cameron. Thanks for checking out this video. In this video, I'm going to be getting dynamic control over the front mic on a kick drum. It's on the outside of the kick drum. In the previous video, I gated the internal mic, and that so far is the only thing that's processed on this entire drum kit. So this is where we are right now. And it sounds pretty cool. Internal mic is gated. So we're now we're going to mess with the dynamics of this external mic. And the reason I'm going to do that is because you can hear there's a lot of snare drum leakage. That snare drum leakage, anything that I do to this external mic to make the kick sound really cool, that's going to be done to that leakage as well. And more often than not, that just creates problems making drum sounds indistinct and flammy and all sorts of weird things. You get some strange frequency interactions and all that kind of stuff. So I want to isolate this drum. Uh, I wind up taking a different approach. I don't normally gate the external drum. And to show you why, I will start out by gating it so you can see why. So I open my gate here. Uh, if I bypass this, which I'm going to do, take a listen to the attack of this. It's kind of a fluffy attack. It's not so much pinpointed. It's not like a 5K, you know, transient kind of defined attack. This is more of a pillowy sound, which is more of a low frequency support for the internal mic. And so, for that reason, it doesn't generally gate quite as usefully. If I go with a really fast attack, as I typically do on drums, it actually gives it more of an attack characteristic, because by the time it finally does open, it opens quickly. But since the sound itself is more pillowy to begin with, I could actually get away with using a slower attack. And then, you know, increase the hold, increase the release, get some sustain happening. And that can be cool, that can be totally useful. And that's cool, and if you want to do that, you can certainly get excellent results blending that in. I, however, typically take a different approach, and the reason is because I really like the resonance of bass drums. I know some people like a single-headed drum that's just kicking and just attack and that kind of stuff, but I really like the bass drum sound to sort of have a sustain and a resonance to it, but I do like to have control over it dynamically, particularly when it comes to managing any leakage issues. Uh, so what I typically do, I'm just going to go up here and uh, get rid of that expand or just deactivate that for the moment. I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to do something up here called a compressor. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a compressor. Yes, I am going to compress it, but I'm going to compress it with a side chain off of the snare drum. So I'm going to, oops, I'm on the wrong track there. I'm going to go over to the snare drum track, the top snare drum track, and I'm going to create a send that is going to be a pre-fader send so that it ignores what I do with the fader while I'm mixing to bus 32. And then I will come to the compressor and I will key it off of bus 32. So I set my bus 32 there. I tell the side chain to look at the key. And now what's going to happen is that this, this is going to, I'm going to solo it, but because it's pre-fader, it's still going to compress based on the snare drum. See that? Check that out. All right. Now I'm going to make it really fast attack. Now even with just the straight up settings that are here, all I've done is increase the attack, but just the default settings themselves are already doing what I want it to do. Hear how much of the snare drum is being removed versus when I bypass it. I'll put it back in. And if I go with a higher ratio and a lower threshold, it starts getting kind of silly. Now, if I do a really fast release, I'll get more resonant or ring or room sound from the snare. And I'm going to play with the attack until it's not snapping. Okay. Now, listen to that versus that. But listen to the resonance of the bass drum itself. Using this approach, I get to keep all that resonance. And there is some cymbal leakage, but 
those are not really key frequencies for this particular mic so i can actually go in with some filtering later uh, a low pass filter and get rid of some of that or maybe just dip the mid-range a little bit to get to further isolate the, the bass drum characteristic so this in the context of the set i could actually use a pretty good amount of it and you can just feel that low frequency blooming and then when i mute it it's like someone just sucked the the huge out of the drums, right? That's a little over the top. Probably wouldn't use that most of the time. But that way I get to keep all that sustain that I like about a double-headed kick drum. Again, it's all preferences. Some people like to yank the front head, and um, I, I like to, you know, tune the drum and get it sounding nice and then use that resonance uh, in the mix. It tends to add a certain amount of hugeness that a, a drum with all attack, even low frequency attack, still just doesn't tend to have. So by side chaining, and, and here's one thing also about the side chaining to, to think of um, before I hang up here, and that is this, the mic that I'm side chaining from that's on the snare drum, it's on the top of the snare drum. That thing's right on the edge of the drum. And if you think of the speed of sound, which I don't off the top of my head actually know what the speed of sound is. Uh, if, if, if you really care to know, go look it up. But basically, it's somewhere around like 1,100 some odd sec uh, feet per second. So I could just round that down to like 1,000 feet per second, basically a foot per millisecond. So the, if that's the case, that the, the mic that's in front of the bass drum is probably three feet-ish, at least, away from the top of the snare drum. So when that snare drum gets hit, it takes about three-ish milliseconds for that sound to reach the external kick mic. So by keying the, the, the compressor off of the top snare mic and then using a pretty fast attack, what that means is it's going to be compressing before that snare leakage reaches the mic. So you can effectively remove the snare as I've done. Which is why you can get stupid with increasing it if you want. Now, all I've done is gate the internal mic and compress the external mic. I still have no EQ, no other compression or dynamics anywhere on this drum kit. So, that's it for this video. Um, I'm going to continue on with the snare drum next. So, keep checking in and I appreciate you checking this out. Thanks.